<laughs> the space industry is witnessing the emergence of exciting new opportunities. Professor Jin Guang Tang, JP, President of the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, will give us insights about future talents in the new space economy. 接下来,香港理工大学校长,唐景光教授,给我们带来新航天经济的人才培养。well, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for this opportunity and also for my council member, Richard, to uh, facilitate this opportunity. Now, uh, the topic given to me is called Future Talents in New Space uh, Economy. Actually, I was thinking of what I should talk about, and of course, I could try to do a talk on a more generic uh, theme, but I decided that the uh, easier job to do is to talk about what we do at PolyU as the president of the university. So basically, I'm going to give you um, an overview of what we do at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University that will relate to talents for the uh, space industry, uh, the so-called new space of con economy, of course, is an emerging uh, space for uh, ec economic activities. Now, before I can tell you what we do, you know, the university, I give you a very brief overview of the university. Uh, what I want to say is that the university is quite heavy in applied science and engineering, so we have a faculty of construction and a faculty of engineering. In fact, both are engineering faculties. Engineering faculty at PolyU is to do with manufacturing. Construction uh, is to do with the development of infrastructure. In fact, in the last 30, dec 30 years, three decades, in Hong Kong, there was more engineering in construction than in manufacturing. Of course, I hope things will change in, in the near future uh, so that we have a more balanced uh, engineering uh, spectrum. Now, Hong Kong PolyU is the only university in Hong Kong which actually separates engineering, manufacturing from uh, construction. We have two, basically two faculties of engineering. We have all these other disciplines, so you can see that if we want to contribute to the training of talents for the new space economy, we can do it from many different angles, right? The university is there for the university positions itself as a innovative, world-class, University, we want to be one of the best universities in the whole country in engineering and technology disciplines. And we also want to be world leading in a significant number of unique disciplines. The ones you have seen here, you know, we have three, the last three listed here are the unique disciplines uh, based schools. We have design, hotel and tourism, and fashion and textiles. In addition to this, we have things like uh, physiotherapy, occupational therapies. Uh, optometry, medical laboratory science. One of the, another one is called geomatics, which is related to the new space economy, involving GPS, GIS kind of technology. So in all these areas, we are already either we are already world leading or we are among the best three in Asia. So we have a very strong position in all these areas. So these are the two pronged approach to excellence, in my view. Um, PolyU is very keen on making sure that our work does not stop at publishing a paper. You know, we want to make sure that the research outcomes get used. So we want to address societal challenges. And to do that, in today's environment, you have to do interdisciplinary research, collaboration across disciplines. So we recently established this thing called the PolyU Academy for Interdisciplinary Research. The actual name is called PEAR, which also means collaboration. We have 11 institutes and uh, six centers. Each of the research institutes receives two million US dollars from internal funding, but they have to also secure a similar amount of funding from outside via major projects worth of, uh, you know, with a value of more than two million Hong Kong dollars each. And then the centers receive about one million US dollars from the uh, university annually, you know, annually, every year. So this is the setup we have for interdisciplinary collaborations, 
I was told that this is the biggest setup in the whole GBA for interdisciplinary research. And among them, we have this thing called the deep space explorations, because PolyU has been doing a lot of work in this area. So what do we do relating to space, you know, space research? Of course, if you look up the definition of space research, you can do it from many disciplines. In fact, a lot of things are interdisciplinary, as we have you know, tried to do in our peer organization. But most importantly, we've done a lot of work in this area of deep space exploration. So the history of PolyU's involvement or contribution in this area started in uh, 2003. That's a very special year. We had SARS. Uh, through to this uh, time now, so it's a, it's a period of 20 years over which we've made our researchers, not myself, our researchers have made a lot of progress. So let me look at this part first. The earlier attempts w were to do with contributing to the space programs in the Europe, in Europe and Russia. So collaborating with European, the European Space Agency and the Russian Space Agency. In fact, the first uh, instrument we manufactured, developed and manufactured at PolyU was for the Russian Space Agency, the Mir Space Station. Uh, these uh, Space forceps. Uh, did you know get sent successfully to a space station and were used there, and then they did the Mars rock crawler, which was sent to the Mars. But uh, this is a U European Space Agency program, but this uh, this mission was not so successful because after landing on the Mars, there was signal was lo lost, so we didn't know what happened. I'm sure the, 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 the course, <laughs> this piece of equipment is still on the Mars. Some, some, somebody, someday you can find it as a, <laughs> a piece of um, historical uh, object. And then the researchers contributed to a Sino-Russian project. Uh, it's called the F Forbos Grant Mission, and they did the soil preparation system. But this mission also didn't succeed. So although we made it, we, we, we succeeded in making that piece of equipment. And finally, this, is, uh, this year, they contributed, worked with the Swedish people, uh, developing this uh, Jovian you know, equipment, the two pieces, and for uh, the mission to the Jupiter icy moons. This, is, this was launched in April 2023, this year. But it will take eight years to reach the target place. So we will know <laughs> many years later. So you can see that in the early uh, activities, uh, collaborating with Europe and uh, Russia, uh, it was a mixed success uh, story. And then from the year 2013, they worked for our national space program. All the missions of the national space program were successful. So every piece of equipment that we made worked, got sent to the target location, and worked. So we actually started from Chang'e 3 to 4 and 5, and then Tianwen 1, the first mass mission. Um, to summarize, we mainly did two things. Uh, one is this equipment for uh, pointing the positioning of the camera, so the pointing system for the camera, or the, the camera itself, which is for the mass. Another aspect is actually the mapping and location, uh, landing site evaluation. So either evaluating the site and in the latest mission to Mars, we actually uh, recommended three landing sites for the national program and eventually they took the first recommended site, which was a utopian plane. So this is the work we do. So this is uh, the latest uh, equipment for the lunar mission. And uh, what do we did? This is Professor K.L. Young, who is one of the two leaders at Apollo. You have another one called Wu Bo. He's a, a surveyor. So you can see that we have the, this, this, this is a spacecraft sent to the moon for the lunar mission, Chang'e 5 lunar mission, 2021 and the robotic arm, which took the soil from the moon, which is called the Regulus, 
was manufactured, researched, and manufactured at PolyU. Uh, then we have the um, also this uh, landing. We did the the landing site evaluation, and then when we came to Tianwen Wang, we did the monitoring column for the landing site, and the the recommendation of the landing uh, for, for the landing process and landing site. So, on the basis of that, we established a space exploration uh, center. This is something I already mentioned as part of the pair organization. It, uh, it's going to focus on four areas. Um, the first one is the um, construction of uh, research bases on the moon. Uh, this is a topic of great importance uh, for our national space program. And then in analysis of these planetary resources, uh, basically regolith. We are waiting for the regolith to arrive. Uh, we, have, we are building the storage uh, facility. And then, of course, our surveyor researcher will work on remote sensing and mapping. In fact, at PolyU, we have a department called Land Surveying and Geo, uh, Geo Informatics. And this department does work on all sorts of space related areas. So, uh, remote sensing is one of their strong areas. And recently, we actually uh, have recruited two leading experts from the US back to Hong Kong to join this. Uh, department, and then space environment and payload research. So this is our center, which is, which does work, you know, in between missions because we do have national missions. We are going to do work for the nat future national missions, but the funding from the national missions come at, in between intervals. So we we support this work from internal resources, and this is uh, just the saying that we have put up facilities to receive regolith and do analysis and we will do simulation of the, of the material from the regolith material to study how we can make use of that material to do, for example, construction on the moon. We, apart from this group, which is led by Professor K.L. Yong and Professor Wu Bo, we have other research. And we have a department of aeronautical and uh, aviation engineering. They have uh, teamed up with the Academy of Aerospace Propulsion Technology uh, of our country. And they are engaged in uh, collaboration in four projects. We also have quite a few researchers who is working on uh, positioning, um, navigation, and one of the example is uh, this one, which is to use low Earth orbit uh, navigation constellation to help achieve precision positioning of vehicles. So this is one of the things we do. I know one of my colleagues have done work which is used by Huawei in their uh, mobile phones. There's a, this company, of course, Hong Kong Aerospace Technology Company, which is based in Hong Kong, a listed company. We have also signed an agreement with them uh, to receive data from them and also they will name a satellite, you know, after our PolyU in, in the near future. Now let's go to the more uh, direct part of nurturing talents. Of course, through all the research programs, we will nurture talents as well, you know. Now this is for secondary school students. So we try to, as we've, you know, our Chairman Lam has said in Hong Kong, you know, one time I was attending my my son's graduation ceremony from Sha Tin College. And all the students with their IB score 42 or above would be, will receive a piece of paper from the school. And they will tell you which discipline they're going to study. None of them choose engineering. All of them went to uh, medicine, law, finance, and some in mathematics or physics, which you know, may prepare them for a career in finance eventually, maybe, you know. So it is, I think it's a difficult thing to still convince people to go to this area. Uh, I guess in Hong Kong, people are under pressure to own a flat. Okay, so this is the program we put up to attract secondary school students. It's called Science World, uh, Exploring Space Benefit, benef to Benefit Mankind. We have, one part of it is online lectures, 
uh, more than 6,000 people uh, attended these online lectures. So it's a very good educational program. And then we did a competition within this program. It's about um, the, it's a competition for a space experiment. So the winner is the diocesan boys school. They proposed an experiment to study the development of cells of lizards in space. So they want to study the effect of microgravity and radiation on growth. This, this actually was later chosen by the China Manned Space Agency in uh, late this year, I mean late August 2023. And Professor Kiel Yong, the professor mentioned, is providing, providing uh, mentoring to them. And of course the students had a chance to visit our laboratory. This is another competition which is uh, undertaken in collaboration with OSA and we um, Thank you for the support. There's this, they did also uh, some lectures, labor laboratory visits, and eventually they had to do a competition on the design of CubeSat, I think. And so St. Paul's College was the winner. We also, PolyU students also participated in a competition of CubeSat design and the, the one is uh, second run up. So, this, so these are the activities among the students. Now more, generic, more generally, the university tries to uh, move with time by providing you know, the most up-to-date education to them. At this moment in Hong Kong and in higher education, the effect of AI on uh, education is enormous. It has effects on two aspects. One is you know, how are we going to do education? How are we going to teach the students when AI is present, right? The second question is what kind of talents do we need once AI becomes widely used? For example, now you can do translation from English to Chinese in a second, you know, in all the days maybe it takes a, a university graduate half a day. So this will change the um, employment opportunities for graduates quite tremendously. So the university has made, it's maybe the first university in Hong Kong which has made AI education compulsory for every student. So every student who come to EPOLU last year, from last year, they have to take a subject on AI and data analytics. We actually had a university forum in Beijing two months ago. The conclusion of the presidents of universities was that we have to make AI a common element of education and we already did it, made this decision three years ago. Now, we also allow students, of course, you can take it as a minor, but more innovatively, we allow students to take this as a secondary major. A secondary major involves, requires 36 credits, which is bigger than a normal master program. So you can be doing a program in design with a secondary major in AI, you can be doing a program in language science with a secondary major in AI. So we are going to, 26 of our programs allow students to do such a secondary major. We will be producing a lot of uh, students with a good mix of expertise for the future industry, including the new space economy. We also allow the same kind of opportunity for innovation and entrepreneurship. More than 20 programs allow students to take innovation and entrepreneurship as a secondary major. So um, this is what I have to share with you. I think I've used m about 15 minutes. Thank you.